See, when we study about the central dogma of molecular biology, we come to know that how DNA molecule gets duplicated into its own copies and how a small segment of it gets transcribed into RNA, particularly messenger RNA, and uh, how this messenger RNA is translated into a polypeptide chain that forms a protein. So we in fact uh, get aware that how messages travel from DNA to RNA and then to protein. Now during this process, a small molecule that assists in bringing amino acid to the site of protein synthesis and that is structure is transfer RNA. So in this presentation, I'm going to explain the salient characteristics of this small molecule. See, the transfer RNA molecules are quite small in size. They are only 75 to 90 nucleotides long structures. And a mature transfer RNA will be four years. When we measure its sedimentation rate, it comes to be four years. These molecules are quite stable in cell cytoplasm and they are very much identical in prokaryotic system as well as in eukaryotes. That is all sorts of organism, whether they are bacteria or fungi or animals or plants. In such cases, the structure, the type of transfer RNA are very similar. Other things are that if we consider yeast transfer RNA, that is tyrosine transfer RNA, it means that transfer RNA which actually recognizes tyrosine amino acid, then it contains 77 nucleotides. So starting from its 5 prime end up to 3 prime end, when we count the number of nucleotides which form this structure, it comes to be exactly 77. But its precursor molecule from which it is actually formed that contains 126 nucleotides. It means the newly synthesized transfer RNA is longer. For example, in this particular case, it is 126 nucleotides long, but then it is, trans, uh, it is post transcriptionally modified. Some of the nucleotides are removed. Some of the bases are actually modified and a mature transfer RNA of tyrosine will have exactly 77 nucleotides. As I just said, that a transfer RNA may contain 75 to uh, you know, 90 uh, nucleotides. Then Robert Holley and his colleagues in 1965 gave a complete structure of transfer RNA, that is of alanine, which was isolated from yeast. So this fellow, Holly and his team, uh, that uh, they actually gave the structure of alanine transfer RNA. And uh, they suggested this secondary clover leaf structure of transfer RNA. You see, uh, in this secondary clover leaf structure, you can see that uh, the single stranded RNA molecule is actually folded in such a way that at certain portions it shows complementary pairing while other portions which do not have uh, you know complementary pairing are actually formed in the form of loop so you can see this one is 5 prime end which always contains g in all sorts of transfer rna the 5 prime end will have the g you know nucleotide and then the 3 prime end will have three nucleotides in sequence, that is CCA. A is the terminal most nucleotide with which amino acid will be binding. We know that amino acid will have its amino end and carboxylic end. So with its carboxylic end of amino acid, this adenine will be binding. Okay, so this is three prime OH end. And then you can see uh, this particular uh, you know, portion is called as acceptor stem because this is the portion with which amino acid is binding. So it is called as acceptor stem. And on the other side, you can see this one is anticodon loop where the three nucleotides will be anticodon, will form actually the anticodon. 
and such anticodon portion will be pairing with the codon portion of messenger RNA. Other thing is that this is D loop. On this side, you can see a small portion that is variable loop. And then the other one is T5C loop. So we are observing that some of the bases are actually modified bases. Like here you see M1A is there. Then here pseudouridine is there. It is pseudouridine. Thymine, which is found in DNA, that is also, uh, that is present in case of this transfer RNA. So it is a modified base. It is actually ribothymidylic acid. So we can see some of the and the other thing is that uh, the complementary pairings are also there at certain portions, like here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven bases are there which show complementary pairing. At the D loop site, you see one, two, three, four bases are there which form complementary pairing. And this is actually almost a constant type of feature. In case of anticodon loop, one, two, three, four, five means at this system, anticodon system, one, two, three, four, five, you know, complementary pairings are there. Likewise, five complementary pairings are there in this T5C, you know, stem. And some of the bases, like here it is ribothymidylic acid, that is called T. I just said that this is a modified base. Pseudouridylic acid is this one. And you can see in this slide, uh, the unusual nitrogen bases in transfer RNA. Uh, are shown that is inosinic acid this i uh, base is found particularly in the anticodon portion uh, the first letter of anticodon may have this inosinic acid and it has capability to pair with uh, u c as well as a so except g it can pair with uh, other three uh, nucleotides present in the third position of codon then uh, the other one is IM that is 1 methyl inosinic acid. This is also a modified base found in transfer RNA. Then GM that is methyl guanylic acid is there. Then dimethyl guanylic acid that is also found in transfer RNA. Pseudo uridylic acid is found in transfer RNA. Ribothymidylic acid about which, about which I just said this is found in transfer RNA. So these are some of the bases which are unusual type but they are present uh, post uh, they are actually incorporated post transcriptionally uh, post transcriptionally in the transfer rna this one is a three dimensional model of transfer rna and uh, this l shaped structure is uh, all the same as we observed in case of clover leaf model which is two dimensional structure here you can see this is 5 prime end where g will always be there this one is 3 prime end with which amino acid will be binding. So this is amino acid binding site. This is T5GC loop. And this system is actually T stem. Then this is D loop. And this portion is variable loop portion. This is anticodon loop where these three uh, letters will form the anticodon portion. Now, 30 to 40 types of transfer RNA are found in bacteria and nearly 50 in animals and plants. This point we should understand that if we analyze the types of transfer RNA present in the cell cytoplasm, we find that just 30 to 40 different types of transfer RNA are there in case of prokaryotic system. Whereas in eukaryotes, particularly in animals and plants, 50 different types of transfer RNA are there. So why it is happening? Because we find that 61 codons uh, actually encode for a specific amino acids. So we believe that 61 different types of transfer RNA will be there in the cytoplasm. But this is not the reality. So this happens only because of wobble pairing. See, in case of wobble pairings, in this structure, you can see this one is a transfer RNA carrying amino acid at its 3 prime end. And this one is its anticodon portion, which will be uh, showing complementary pairing with the messenger RNA. So this is third letter, third nucleotide of messenger RNA. And this one is the first letter of transfer RNA, because if we start reading from five prime end, 
then it comes to be the first letter. So there is flexible pairing, very flexible pairing between the first letter of transfer RNA and the third letter of messenger RNA. And because of this flexible pairing or wobble pairing, the total types of transfer RNA in prokaryotes as well as eukaryotes gets reduced. So this is actually important point to understand that and I have explained in a separate video uh, about this wobble position that how this flexible pairing occurs over here. Now we can also understand the way transfer RNA gets charged with the amino acid because if this is a transfer RNA it has to combine with the amino acid. So in very brief we can understand that how this process is accomplished. See for this process an enzyme is required that is called as amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase and here X is written. X means this will be of a specific type and a specific type of amino acyl transfer RNA synthetase will actually be binding with a specific amino acid. So uh, there you can see X denotes that a specific type of amino acid will bind to corresponding specific transfer RNA synthetase enzyme. So what happens? This enzyme first you know combines with amino acid, a specific amino acid in the presence of ATP. This ATP is actually required as energy molecule. So the enzyme will then be bound with amino acid. It will carry amino acid along with AMP and to you know inorganic phosphate that is released out. So this molecule is actually required to activate the process and then in the next step this uh, activated enzyme complex will bind with the transfer RNA. So what happens? The enzyme gets transferred to the 3 prime end of transfer RNA and uh, I'm sorry the amino acid. Amino acid will then gets transferred to the uh, 3 prime portion of this uh, transfer RNA. So now it is charged transfer RNA and finally this amino acid uh, I'm sorry, this enzyme, amino acid transfer RNA synthetase enzyme is free. The AMP molecule is also free. So this is the way the transfer RNA will be charged with the amino acid. And then it will be coming to the site of protein synthesis. So hope that this much information will be useful to understand the structure of transfer RNA and how this transfer RNA assists in the process of translation.